Good evening and welcome. Tonight I'm going to be reading to you this book about Columbia. Let's just dive right in. Here's where Columbia is located in the world. Cute. Columbia. From the snow to the surf. Cute. From Columbia's highest mountain, Pico Cristobal Colon, to the beaches near the historic city of Cartagena is a distance of only 120 miles. In that short trip, the same as traveling from Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia, the landscape is transformed from rugged, snow-capped mountains to a tropical jungle-clad coast. As well as mountains and rainforests, Columbia has some of the rainiest and driest spots on Earth, huge wetlands, rolling grasslands, and violent volcanoes. All this variety fits into one of the largest countries in South America. But Colombia is less important for its size than for its location. It controls the southern end of a narrow strip of land that joins the continent to Central and North America. For that reason, Colombia is often called the Gateway to South America. This great map. Coast to Coast Colombia is unique in South America. It is the only country with coasts on two oceans, the Caribbean, an arm of the Atlantic, and the Pacific. The Caribbean coast forms Colombia's northern border, while the Pacific runs down its western side. Colombia has land borders from west to east with Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, and Venezuela. Finally, there is a short border with Panama in the north on the Isthmus, or neck of land, that leads to Central and North America. About 20% of Colombia's population live on the Caribbean coast. As well as having some great beaches, the coastal region is also home to Colombia's highest mountain range, the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Its two highest peaks are the Cristobal Colón and Simón Bolívar named after two of the most important people in Colombia's history. Cristobal Colón is the Spanish name for the explorer Christopher Columbus, for whom the country is named. Simón Bolívar was the general who led the fight to make Colombia an independent country. Off the coast, the Caribbean islands of San Andrés and Old Providence also belong to Colombia. Down in the jungle. Along with its neighbors, Colombia shares part of the world's largest tropical rainforest, the Amazon. The Amazon River itself only skirts about 50 miles of Colombia's border in the far south of the country. But the river's tributaries, smaller rivers that flow into the Amazon, extend across the southern half of Colombia. This area is mainly low-lying land that has warm weather and high rainfall all year round. As a result, it is covered in thick, steamy jungle. The Amazon rainforest is not the wettest part of Colombia, however. That honor goes to the Chocó region in the northwest, towards the border with Panama. Few people live in this area, and one reason is that it is the rainiest place in South America. The regional capital, Quibdó, has an annual rainfall of more than 354 inches, that is enough water to cover a two-story house. First link in the chain. Look at this volcano. The northern tip of the Andes Mountains dominates Colombia. Three quarters of Colombians live on their slopes, and most of the big cities, including the capital, Bogota, are located there. There are three main mountain ranges, or cordilleras. The Cordillera Occidental, which means western, Cordillera Central, and Cordillera Oriental, or Eastern. They meet near Pasto in the south of Colombia, where they join the rest of the Andes. Between the mountains are two river valleys, the Valle de Cauca, the Cauca Valley, and the Valle de Magdalena, Magdalena Valley. Over millions of years, ash from the many volcanoes in the area has been added to the valleys' as soils, making them very rich and fertile. Bogota sits on a large plateau to the east of the Magdalena Valley at an elevation of 8,660 feet. That makes the city higher, but not colder, than some of the ski resorts in North America, 
including Aspen, Colorado. Los Llanos. Between the rainforest and the mountains lie Los Llanos, the Colombians' word for the plains. These vast, almost treeless grasslands extend, extend into Venezuela. They lie in a huge natural basin that formed around 60 million years ago, when the Andes began to rise in the west. Rivers washed soil into the basin, creating a savanna landscape. The area is drained today by the Orinoco River, which is one of South America's longest waterways. The grasslands cover an area of around 155,000 square miles of Colombia, but are home to only 2% of the country's population. Although it has a very wet, rainy season, Los Llanos is very dry for most of the year. There is not enough water in the soil to support many trees or crops, but the grass that grows here has been used for centuries to raise cattle. Dry land. Not everywhere in Colombia is regularly lashed with heavy rain. The Guajira Peninsula, which sticks out onto the Caribbean at the northernmost tip of Colombia, is a desert. The combination of mountains to the south and ocean to the north keeps the rain in the area to a minimum. The desert is the driest place in Colombia, but not the hottest. That record belongs to the Maracaibo Basin in Norte de Santander, the border with Venezuela. Cute eyes in the trees. There's so many cute pictures in this book. The forests of Colombia are home to some very unusual monkeys. While other monkeys curl up for a sleep in the branches each evening, that is when the night monkey comes out to feed. No other monkey in the world is active in the dark. The night monkey has super senses, including huge eyes that can see even in faint light. Night monkeys also have more sensitive noses than any other monkeys, so they can snip out ripe fruits and flowers in the darkness. Colombia's forests hold many other wonders. In rainy areas, lush forests grow with moss-covered trees. Brightly colored birds, such as the trogon, fly overhead. In drier regions, tortoises, iguana lizards, and armadillos are also common. Oh, look at the babies. Lost Forests Colombia is so fertile that if its countryside were left alone by people and all farm animals were removed, it would soon be almost completely covered again in forests. Even Los Llanos would have areas of thin woodland. Only the dry desert areas and the tops of the mountains would not have trees. Thousands of years ago, that's just how Colombia was. Since then, however, people have cleared trees to make way for fields and plantations. Some of the Los Llanos grassland has been turned into pasture for cattle. Only the steepest slopes of the Andes mountains still have the original forest. These forests are renowned for their great variety of orchids. More than 30,000, or most of the 30,000 orchid species that live in Colombia grow there although some orchids are also found in the sandy dunes of the Guajira Desert, down in the jungle. The largest areas of forest in Colombia are the jungles of the Amazon Basin in the south and the rainforest of the wet Chocó region. The Chocó also has long stretches of mangrove swamp, which lie along the Pacific coast and also around the mouth of the Atrato River. The swamps of the Atrato are home to the Caribbean manatee. Inland, the Choco forest has 450 of Colombia's 1,800 bird species. The jungle is also home to howler monkeys, raccoons, deer, and peccaries. Large rodents such as agoutis, I've never heard of that, pacas, and capybaras live in the swampy areas, prowling hunters. The forest is good hunting ground for Colombia's largest predators. The rosette pattern on a jaguar's fur keeps the big cat hidden in the dappled light under the trees. Colombia is also home to the harpy eagle, the world's largest eagle. It swoops through the forest to snatch monkeys and sloths from the treetops. The largest hunter is the black caiman. Caiman is the South American name for alligator. Black caimans grow to 20 feet long and live in rivers and swamps. They also occasionally swim a little way out to sea. 
Oh boy, there they are. The tributaries of the Amazon River in the south of Colombia are home to an altogether different type of caiman. Cuvier's dwarf caiman is the smallest kind of crocodilian in the world. It grows to just five feet long. Black caimans snap up fish and water birds, but dwarf caimans swim in fast-flowing streams where they feed on shellfish. The rivers that cross Los Llanos flow into the Orinoco River and are home to the rare Orinoco crocodile. This species and the caimans have long been hunted for their skins, and not just in Colombia. It is estimated that the number of caimans in South America has fallen by 99% in the last hundred years. Rare bear. One of the largest mammal species in Colombia is the rarely seen spectacled bear. The only bear species living in South America, it hides in thick vegetation high in the Andes. It is named for the pale rings around its eyes, which look like a pair of glasses. They're so cute. The bear lives in the mountain forests, surviving on a range of foods from nuts and honey to baby deer. The forests are damp and thick with vegetation such as vine-like lianas and fleshy bromeliads, plants that grow high up in trees. Large plants include rubber trees and giant bamboo. The spectacled bear also sometimes moves higher up the mountains, where the forest is replaced by vegetation called paramo. This is unique to the Andes and is a mix of grasses and plants called frarejón, which are large bushes with hairy leaves. I hope I said that right. Probably not. Flashes of color. The tropical forests are filled with color as butterflies and birds, such as resplendent quetzals, toucans, and macaws fly among the branches. Los Llanos also attracts many birds. Most are water birds, such as herons, flamingos, and egrets. They arrive after the start of the rainy season, which floods the grasslands with shallow pools. Ooh, legends of gold. When Spanish explorers arrived in what is now Colombia in 1500, they heard tales of people made of gold. Over time, the stories became the legend of El Dorado, the Golden One. For decades, the hope of finding fabulous wealth drew Spanish adventurers to Colombia. The people the Spaniards met were not wealthy, but their past had its own legends and mysteries. We know very little about the life of early Colombians. One of the biggest mysteries is at San Augustin, high up in the Magdalena Valley. Some 500 stones stand near the village, carved with the faces of eagles, jaguars, snakes, frogs, and humans. The stones, which are up to 20 feet tall, are centuries old. Perhaps they were used in religious rituals, but no one knows their precise purpose or who carved them. I like to read this little caption. It's always about the very ancient history of the people there, so let's see. Oh, these are the things at San Augustine. That's so cool. Colombia is the overland gateway to South America. The earliest inhabitants of the continent traveled through present-day Colombia as they migrated from North America south. However, Colombia never supported large civilizations like the Inca of Peru or the Aztec and Maya of Mexico. Archaeologists have found evidence that ancient peoples lived near to Colombia's rivers. The main site so far discovered is San Agustin, near the Magdalena River, but the statues there still guard many of their secrets. We do know that sculptures were carved around 1,000 years ago by people who lived by growing crops like corn and yucca and gathering berries. Archaeologists suggest that they lived comfortably because they had time to make the beautiful stone carvings. But whoever they were, these early Colombians had left the area long before the Europeans arrived in the 16th century. The First Colombians The first people arrived in Colombia about 20,000 years ago. Little is known about their lives because they did not leave much evidence behind. Around 12,000 years ago, new groups settled on the plateau that is now the site of Bogota and set up homes elsewhere in the valley of the Magdalena River. These groups grew into a civilization known as the Chipcha. 
when the first Spanish explorers arrived in Colombia 500 years ago, they met the Muisca, also known as the Chipcha after their language. They also came across people from seven other pre-Columbian civilizations, or peoples who lived in the Americas before Christopher Columbus crossed the Atlantic. The Muisca were the most advanced of these peoples. From their homeland in the high plateaus of the Cordillera Occidental, they rose to become the dominant power in Colombia in about the year 700. We know quite a lot about the Muisca. Like the Inca of Peru, they worshipped the sun and performed human sacrifices. But they did not build huge cities like the Inca. The Muisca lived in villages of mud-covered houses built from cane. They grew corn and potatoes and traded with other groups. The Lost City North of the Andes, in the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, lies the Ciudad Perdida, or Lost City. This mysterious place is one of the largest pre-Columbian cities so far discovered in South America. The Tayrona people built it on the northern slopes of the high mountains. Archaeologists believe the city was used between the 11th and 15th century CE and was home to up to 4,000 people. Spanish invaders killed most of the Tayrona in the early 1500s, and the jungle gradually swallowed the city. Ciudad Perdida lay hidden in the forest until it was rediscovered in 1975. A Spanish land. Explorers from Spain first visited the Colombian coast in 1500. After Columbus's voyage eight years earlier, they were eager to investigate the New World. They did not find much interesting in Colombia, and soon moved on. Another 25 years passed before the Spanish built a permanent base on the north coast, Santa Marta. Today it is the oldest town in Colombia. The first Spanish settlers were obsessed with finding treasure. In 1536, Gonzalo Jimenez de Quesada led an expedition inland along the Magdalena Valley. He met and easily defeated the Muisca. In 1538, Spanish raiders looted the Muisca's capital, Bacata, stealing its gold and 230 emeralds. Shortly after, the Spaniards built their own city beside the old capital. The new city soon became known by a Spanish version of the Muisca name, Bogota. New Granada. In 1550, the Spanish king organized the north of South America into a huge colony called New Granada, which stretched from Ecuador to Venezuela. It included the settlements along the Colombian coast. Few Spaniards lived in the southern forests, which became part of the colony of Peru. The Spanish merchants of New Granada grew rich from trading gold and jewels and slaves. They brought Africans to work in the mines. Colombia was ruled by Spain for more than 250 years. Independence By the late 1700s, people in South America felt a little connection with their Spanish rulers. They wanted to govern themselves. In November 1811, Cartagena declared its independence from Spain. Bogota followed. In 1815, Spanish soldiers arrived to reclaim control, but Spain had been weakened by wars in Europe. It fought for New Granada until August 1819, when the Venezuelan general Simón Bolívar defeated the Spanish forces at Boyacá in the mountains north of Bogotá. Battle for Control Bolívar set up a country called Gran Colombia, which was made up of what are now Colombia, Ecuador, Panama, and Venezuela. The general then headed south, where other countries were fighting the Spanish for independence. Without him, Gran Colombia fell apart. By 1835, Colombia had become a separate country. From the start, there was a battle to control the country. Conservatives wanted the Catholic Church to be closely linked to a powerful central government. Liberals wanted to keep the church out of politics and to make the country a federation of states. The conflict has never really ended. It has caused many periods of violence and civil war. Colombia enjoyed its longest period of peace in the early 20th century when it became a leading producer of bananas and coffee. However, turmoil returned later in the century 
when rebel forces and criminal gangs took control of large parts of the country. A mix of people. Colombia's people are as varied as its landscape. Colombians are descended from three ethnic groups, the pre-Columbian Indians, African people forced to work as slaves, and European settlers. Their faces reflect this mixture of heritages. Nearly 60% of Colombians are mestizos. They are descended from Indian women who gave birth to children fathered by Spanish conquerors and settlers. As a legacy of the slave trade, 26% of Colombians, 11 million people, have African heritage. Brazil is the only American nation with a higher proportion. Most Afro-Colombians live near the coasts. The remaining Indian groups live in isolation in remote inland parts of the country. City learning. For children who live in Columbia cities, going to school is a lot like going to school anywhere else. School is compulsory between the ages of 5 and 16. In areas with a large population, schools sometimes operate a shift system to fit all the students in. The younger children attend in the morning and the older children in the afternoon. When students have finished elementary and junior high school, most go to high school while they are 18 or 19 until they are 18 or 19. For those who graduate, there are more than 130 colleges to choose from. However, college is too expensive for 80% of Colombians. In the country. Ooh, he's working hard. For children living in the countryside, it is a lot harder to get a good education. Some children have to help their parents work in the fields. For children in remote places like the Chocó and Los Llanos, the nearest school might be far from their home. There is no public transportation and no school buses, so the only way for children to get to school is to walk, even if it's miles away. There are other ways for children in remote areas to learn. In the 1950s, Colombia was the first country in South America to teach lessons by radio. Since the early 1980s, it has also broadcast regular educational TV shows aimed both at students and at adults who have had no schooling. TV and radio lessons have helped reduce the number of Colombians who cannot read from around 50% in the 1950s to only 7% today. A Catholic Nation At the heart of Colombian society is the Roman Catholic Church. Christianity was brought to the country by Spanish missionaries almost 500 years ago. Churches are everywhere. There's even a cathedral carved entirely out of salt in the mine of Zipaquira. Catholicism is the largest religion of Colombia, and more than 90% of Colombians are Catholics. Most of Colombia's public holidays are Saints' Days and other religious festivals. Most families go to church on Sunday, and children are usually christened as infants and confirmed later. However, more Colombians are now joining new types of churches. Loving Rhythm Colombians love to dance and listen to music. Two of the most popular types of music, the cumbia and vainato, come from when Colombia was home to many African slaves and Spanish slave owners. The music combines Spanish melodies and African rhythms brought by the slaves when they arrived at Cartagena. In some Andean countries, such as Peru or Bolivia, music is influenced by the music of pre-Columbian peoples. In Colombia, however, music is played on a mix of European, African, and Indian instruments. The tune of the vainato is played on an accordion, but the rhythm comes from a caja drum, which is like a bongo, or the guacharaca an Indian instrument made of a palm stick that is scraped with a metal fork. The cumbia's lively mix of guitars, accordion, bass, drums, and flutes has spread beyond Colombia to the rest of Latin America. It is still played in villages by local bands, but now it is so popular that you can listen to cumbia bands in cities across the world. Colombian music is meant for dancing. Children and adults often hold public dance performances and competitions during village festivals. Family food. Mealtime is a highlight of the day for many Colombians. It is a chance for families and friends to come together to eat. 
Lunch is traditionally the largest meal of the day, but modern life is too busy for many people in the cities to enjoy a big meal except on weekends. During the week, people might eat snack meals instead. The most popular are empanadas, a pastry filled with either meat or chicken and vegetables. Another popular snack is corn griddle pancakes, or arepas, buñuelos, a deep-fried ball of corn flour and cheese, are another favorite. Shakira. <laughs> I love her. Fresh fruit is a popular dessert. Mango, pineapple, and passion fruit are squeezed to make juice. Colombian dishes vary between regions. On the coast, people eat a lot more fish than in the highlands, where meat dishes are common. In the south, toward Ecuador, people cook with potatoes. In the rest of the country, most dishes are served with rice, corn, plantains, and yucca. Coffee is the most popular drink for adults, not just at breakfast, but throughout the day. Children drink agua de panela, which is brown sugar and water. Magical books. Colombia has provided the inspiration for one of the world's leading novelists, the Nobel Prize winner Gabriel García Márquez. His 1967 novel, Cien Años de Soledad, or One Hundred Years of Solitude, began a new era in Hispanic-American novels. It is one of the most popular books ever written in Spanish. Another of García Márquez's novels, Amor en los Tiempos de Cólera, Love in the Time of Cholera, was made into a movie set in Cartagena. Many of García Márquez's novels use a style called magical realism. Unbelievable things happen, such as someone floating away into the sky, but they are treated by the characters as if they are completely normal. Garcia Marquez also uses his work to criticize the Colombian government and its failure to solve Colombia's social problems. Ancient and Modern Bogotá's Museo de Oro, the Museum of Gold, holds more than 34,000 pieces of pre-Columbian art. They include a replica of a gold raft, called the Balsamuisca, used by the Chipcha people for religious ceremonies. The highlight of the museum is a whole room full of golden objects named for El Dorado. Many historic treasures were sent abroad by the Spaniards. Today, the artifacts are kept within the country. Colombia's main cultural exports are TV shows that are watched across the Spanish-speaking world. One very popular type of show is the telenovela, or soap opera. Every year, Colombian television studios produce dozens of telenovelas. Crazy for sports. Soccer is the most popular sport for Colombians to play and watch. The national team is usually one of the strongest in South America and often qualifies for World Cup finals and Pan American tournaments. The team is known for its exciting style. The former national goalkeeper, René Higuita, used to clear the ball from his goal with a risky but powerful backflip called the scorpion kick. Bullfighting was introduced to Colombia by the Spaniards. Most cities have a bullring. Matadors, or bullfighters, come from around the world to show off their skills. Tejo is a traditional game in rural villages. It is a little like horseshoes but competitors throw heavy metal plates at a clay target on the ground. The center of the target is filled with packets of gunpowder, so it explodes when a plate hits it. Riding High Colombia is the only place in South America where cycling is popular. The steep mountain roads of the Colombian Andes are perfect for cyclists who want to train to compete in the world's leading race, the Tour de France, which has a course through the mountains. In 2007, Colombian cyclist Maurizio Soler was crowned King of the Mountains as the most successful hill cyclist in that year's Tour de France. Colombia has its own cycle race, the Vuelta a Colombia, or Tour of Colombia. It covers 765 miles of some of the most difficult terrain in Colombia. The race started in 1951, and cyclists consider it one of the toughest races in the world. The Road to recovery. The start of the 21st century saw Colombia's fortunes improve. The new president, Alvaro Uribe Velez, continues to reform Colombia. 
He is attempting to restore peace by tackling the rebel groups that have fought against the government for the last 40 years. With financial aid from the United States, his government continued Plan Colombia, a long-running program that to rid the country of the gangs or cartels that produce illegal drugs for sale around the world. The chance of long-term peace has begun a boom in Colombia's economy. The illegal drug trade is less likely to cause problems for legal businesses. Today, Colombia is growing rich from regular industries such as farming, banking, and tourism. Sustaining Democracy Colombia is unusual compared with many of its Latin American neighbors. It has a long history of democracy, while they have often been ruled by dictators. Since Colombia won independence in 1821, first as part of Gran Colombia, its politics have been led by the conservative and liberal parties. Power swung between the two, accompanied by violence. In 1958, the two sides brought over a century of conflict to an end. They joined forces as the National Front, which governed Colombia until 1974. By then, the country had changed from a rural agricultural society to an urban industrial one. However, the problems of poverty and injustice in rural areas, which had been one of the main causes of the power battle, were left still unresolved by the National Front administration. Taking control. In the 1970s, the problem arose again. Rebel groups restarted the civil war. The rebels were poor farmers who wanted to have more say over what happened on the land. In the chaos, drug cartels could operate freely, mainly in the Cauca Valley. The government was unable to stop them from selling drugs all over the world. In 1990, Colombia's political system was modernized. The first step was to rewrite the constitution. It was a bold move. Colombia had the oldest constitution in South America, dating from 1886. The new constitution allowed minorities, such as pre-Columbian groups and black people, to be represented in Congress for the first time. The changes seem to have had a positive effect. All Colombia's different peoples began working together to run the country better. Coffee Center Colombia is best known for its leading export, coffee. The Colombian hills grow some of the best quality coffee beans in the world. The country produces one-eighth of the world's total coffee crop. Coffee has transformed the Colombian economy. About one-sixth of all the country's fields are used for coffee. There is even a coffee theme park. The Parque Nacional de Café is located in the Cordillera Central at the heart of coffee country. As well as rides, the park has exhibits about the history of coffee and how a raw coffee berry from a tropical hillside becomes a steaming latte in a coffee shop. Farming Hard One quarter of Colombia's land is used for farming. The variety of landscapes makes it possible to grow a range of crops, many of which are exported. After coffee, bananas are the second most important crop. They are grown, along with cotton and sugar cane, on plantations in the northern region. Other crops include rice, tobacco, corn, and cocoa. Other food products from Colombia are beef from Los Llanos and shrimps from the Atlantic. Less than one-third of the population are farmers. They often produce only enough for their own family. These small farmers are running out of land because of the spread of larger farms and plantations. They are forced to farm on steeper slopes in the mountains. That causes problems with erosion when mountainsides are washed away by heavy rains. Rich in Minerals Among the earliest attractions that drew Europeans to Colombia were gold and jewels. During Spanish rule, Colombia produced more gold than any other part of Latin America. Centuries later, Colombia still provides these riches. It produces 90% of the world's emeralds and large quantities of gold and platinum. The dry Guajira Peninsula hides another potentially valuable treasure, coal. The reserves are huge. Perhaps 60% of South America's coal is there. This coal produces less pollution when it is burned than coals from other parts of the world. 
new oil strikes have been made in the northern Llanos region and the Amazon to add to reserves in the mountains. Pipelines have been built to transport petroleum across the Andes to the north coast so it can be loaded onto tankers and exported. Colombia's oil production is about 800,000 barrels a day. The country does not use much of its oil and coal as a source of energy. Nearly 75% of Colombia's electricity comes from hydroelectric plants built on its many rivers. Servicing needs. Surprisingly, for a land rich in natural resources, half of Colombians work in the service industries. These include the government, banks, hospitals, schools, and tourism. The coastal town of Cartagena is the most popular tourist destination for foreign visitors. Wealthy Colombians take vacations on the Caribbean islands. Brighter future. Colombia's future is positive. Some rebel groups are agreeing to peace talks and the drug cartels are being defeated. However, in the process, rural Colombians are still being forced from their villages. It is uncertain whether the booming economy will be enough to provide jobs for these displaced people and ensure Colombia remains a leading nation in South America. And that is the end of our book for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Good night.